Um, just to give you a little background on who I am, um, I'm Mary Berg. I am um, a veterinary a registered veterinary technician and a VTS in dentistry. And I've been in dentistry basically um, even before I became credentialed as a technician. I uh, started with a company that was doing veterinary dental research. Um, so I worked in a research realm for over um, 13 years and then went to private practice as a practice manager and dental technician, um, and then started consulting and teaching full-time about a little over eight years ago now. So dentistry has kind of been my passion. In fact, one of my nicknames is actually the Dental Diva. So we'll just throw that out there to let you know. Um, but I do have a, a, have been teaching in different veterinary technician programs over the last uh, five or six years. And I have kind of a, a really feel that we're missing the boat. First of all, just to kind of get started, when we're talking about bridging the veterinary dental gap, we know that over 80%, and it's probably closer to 90% of our patients that we see in veterinary hospitals have some degree of periodontal disease, and that's both cats and dogs. So there was a study done, and it's been a little bit older study, but about in 2013 or so, that showed that only 14% were actually getting care at veterinary hospitals. So we're missing the boat, even if you know we're missing over 60, 70% of those patients who have dental disease, just are not getting the treatment they deserve and they need to have. And we know it's anecdotally, but we know that if we keep these animals healthy, we keep their mouths healthy, we can actually extend their life two to three years. Now there is no study technically proving that, but you can almost ask anybody in the dental field and we'll tell you that we see this all the time where we just have healthier pets live longer. And, um, you know, I always kind of say when I'm, when I'm presenting that if you have a 12 year old toy poodle in your practice who's in renal failure, I can almost guarantee you that their mouth is just a train wreck of periodontal disease. So we know there's that link. And we really need to help our students understand how important dentistry is. Unfortunately, the um, dentistry is actually one of the seven domains on the VTNE, and overall, it seems to be one of the lowest performing. So we know at that point that we're really just not teaching it to the degree we need to be teaching dentistry. One of the things that's really distressing for me is I just saw this come across um, within the last week that the AVMA, the COE um, Committee on um, Education just made dentistry part of the curriculum in vet schools. It's 2020 guys, okay? So it's something that's taken this long and, and granted dentistry is still a fairly young um, specialty about tw tw uh, 30, 35 years, um, but you know, it's taken this long before it becomes something they're actually teaching in vet schools. And I know when I went to tech school back um, many years ago, I didn't get much dental training. In fact, I think I basically had about a week of it, if that. And um, we really, you know, I know it's something that we can really improve upon in our technician programs. So when we look at what the, the CBTEA uh, recommends, we're really, you know, we kind of categorize it under nursing. And we really just want to make sure they know how to do a COHAD or comprehensive oral health assessment and treatment, what we used to call a PROFI. Um, we don't really recommend calling it a profi anymore because rarely are we preventing disease. We are usually treating disease when we do a cohab. So we want to make sure we're, um, you know, teaching our, our technician students how to do this because dentistry can be something that can really be technician driven. In fact, for almost all aspects of dentistry with the exception of oral surgery, AKA extractions um, and more advanced procedures such as root canals, um, endodontics, prostodontics, orthodontics, things like that. The technician can be doing the majority of that. They can do the oral exam if they're properly trained. Um, they're gonna be taking the dental x-rays. They're gonna be doing the dental cleaning. They can even offer the pain management to that pet so that they can make sure that pet is pain-free throughout that procedure. And this is something that we, we constantly talk about technician utilization 
And how can we more fully utilize our technicians in practice? Well, dentistry is one of those areas. And if you think about the fact that we have 80% of our patients have this, we really should be doing a better job of communicating that need to our clients and filling those tables and letting those technicians do what they're really good at. And as I said, it could be such a technician driven um, income. I mean, such a technician driven practice. Practices are losing money now because we aren't doing as many spay and neuters as we used to do because of lower cost spay and neuter clinics. They're losing income because of online pharmacies. Things like those things that we used to really depend on in, in practice are gone or le are leaving. So dentistry is actually one of the ways that our practices can you know, help recover some of that revenue. And it is something that isn't just there to um, you know, make money. That's not what it's about. We're actually offering better care to our patients when we keep their mouth clean. And, and the goal is actually prevention. It's just like a vaccine. It's just like um, feeding a good diet, something like that. We should be preventing it instead of waiting to treat it once we have severe disease present. I actually had a student of mine um, just recently who stated that um, at her practice, um, they didn't do dentistry, even though the doctor really understood the importance of dentistry, they just didn't do it because the veterinarian didn't like it. Um, and to me, that was like, well, they really don't understand the importance of dentistry if you're not going to provide that service to your clients. Um, it really can be something that the technician really takes ownership of. It can be everything from client education. So talking to that client, um, presenting that treatment plan step-by-step, step, explaining why each step is important to the patient um, and to the animal's overall well-being, to actually, like as I said, doing the oral exam, x-rays, all of those things that are in involved in that procedure. But I'm a big believer in, in technicians should be doing that client education as much as possible for those, for those um, pet owners to help them understand why it's so important, as well as home care. Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity when we talk about wanting to create more technician um, appointments in our practices. We'll have those follow-up visits being conducted by the technician. So getting back to why I think important teaching dentistry is so important to our, our students is because it can be something that can aid their career, if they have their dental skills down and they can do um, a good job of oral examination and, and efficient, effective cleaning techniques and understand how to administer nerve blocks and how to go ahead and really communicate well with the client, they're going to be a huge asset to the practice that they go to. And I understand it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, not everybody likes dentistry as much as I do. Um, one of the reasons I like it is because it's instant gratification. I can go ahead and clean a pet's mouth and, and two days later, they're acting like a puppy again um, because it can make, be so rewarding to us as technicians. So when we look at incorporating a dentistry into our um, curriculums, I really think it has to, to become um, an individual course itself. We have so many times it's taught in a nursing course and it might be just a week or two or three or something like that. Now there are programs out there who do a great job and have a whole semester of dentistry, which I, I commend you guys because it is such an important thing. Um, but I really think it should be something that should be an entire semester. And I know it's hard fitting it all in guys, I get it. I understand that we have two years to fit everything we need to have and teach our technicians in that time frame, um, I always kind of go back to when I was in, in tech, tech uh, school. I actually went through like two semesters of lab, laboratory procedures. And I'm thinking back how many of those procedures that I learned to do in tech school did we never do in practice? And um, while I think they're important to understand and have a uh, ability to do, we weren't teaching something that we did every single day, and that is a dental procedure. So we need to 
really incorporate dentistry as a course in and of itself. And when we look at that, there's so many different aspects to what we should be teaching. I mean, it can be um, just literally, how do I communicate to a client about dentistry? Yeah, we talk about doing the open-ended questions and we talk about you know, how to interview the client to get a good history, but how do we really communicate dentistry to that pet owner? How do we get them to be, um, you know, uh, have compliance in, in the recommendation of a dental cleaning. Some of that is changing our vocabulary. Stop using the word dentals. Okay, dentals is an adjective. Um, we don't go and say your dog needs a cardiac um, or your dog needs an ortho. So let's call it what it is. Um, and that is a cohat or comprehensive oral health assessment treatment or professional dental cleaning, um, but not a Technically, it's not a prophy unless it's a dog that's probably under one or two years of age who doesn't have any disease present at the moment. Um, and then we can go into the importance of preventing the disease and what happens and what is involved in the progression of periodontal disease. It starts with inflammation and it literally becomes an infection in that pet's mouth. And one of the things that I will always tell people is that if I took all the tissue off of a, say, a Labrador retriever, it would be about the size of the palm of my hand, all the gingival tissue. And can you imagine a pet owner not wanting to treat an infection that's the size of the palm of my hand, but because it's in the oral cavity, they're just not getting how important it is. So we really need to help our students understand how important dentistry is to the pet's overall well-being. And there are links to systemic infections. Um, there's a lot of literature in human medicine that shows that periodontal disease can lead to kidney, heart, and liver issues. Um, and there are studies out there that are linking it in animals too, not as many as I'd like to see, um, but there are some, some, some uh, studies out there that show there is a link. So we know um, when we have inflammation, we have an increased corticosteroids. Um, and when we have natural corticosteroids, we have an increase in um, possible um, kidney disease and things like that. Another issue that we could be teaching is more about oral anatomy, uh, really understanding not just the numbers of the teeth using the triadent system, but kind of how the teeth are formed, um, going through the different stages, uh, what, what's normal, what's not normal. My biggest thing is to always say, hey, what's abnormal? Um, I don't care what, you know, I want you to know what's normal is so you can recognize abnormal and what needs to be done on, an, on a dental chart and how to officially and appropriately chart dental disease. In addition to that, it's just the steps of the cohat. What are the official steps of the cohat? What should we be doing um, for the dental cleaning procedure in itself and why each step is important and how do we do that to the best of our ability? And that includes making sure they understand that we should clean um, both the crowns of the teeth and below the gum line and that we really should be using different tips on our power scalers um, and how to properly use hand instruments to do um, the uh, root planing and curatage that we need to be doing on our dental patients as well, as well as taking x-rays. My passion is teaching taking dental x-rays. And um, I think it, it can be something that if you have a technician graduate who can walk in and take dental x-rays, boy, oh boy, are they, they're gonna be a boon to that practice really quickly um, to really understand how to get those x-rays in a timely manner and have a diagnostic x-ray um, so that the veterinarian can make the decision on where that patient is at. As well as pain management, we know dental procedures hurt. Anybody who's ever sat in a dental chair and had something done knows it's probably hurts a little bit. So we really wanna make sure our, our, our technicians are understanding how important it is to administer pain management by not only anesthesia, but by nerve blocks so that um, the patient can be maintained at a very low level of, of inhalant anesthesia during the procedure. And it actually makes the recovery time much faster for that patient. And then home care. There are so many options available for home care and so much um, misleading information on what should be done for home care. Um, and really helping that those students understand what's a good idea for home care. Yeah, you know, we know the gold standards, tooth brushing, but less than 2% of Americans do brush their pet's teeth. So what else can be done 
to really get the benefit um, for that pet after you've done the dental cleaning and make sure that the pet owner knows that a dental cleaning isn't a one and done. Um, you know, you're going to have to, we go to the dentist every six months, you know, and get our teeth cleaned. And, you know, if we get the dog in there every year to 18 months, I'm ecstatic, but we have to do something in between that time to keep that mouth really, really healthy. And, and what are all the different options out there and how does each of these options work? In addition to that, our technicians when they graduate should have an understanding of what options are out there for advanced treatments. They don't have to know how to do endodontics or root canal or how to create a, a, a crown um, and those kinds of things. And, but they really need to understand at least the basics of what those procedures entail so they can better explain that to a pet owner who is going to be referred to a dental specialist for say endodontic treatment or orthodontic treatment. They should be able to have, be that, that conduit um, to explain what is involved in a root canal and why is a root canal maybe a better option than an extraction at this point? Um, which teeth should we really work hard to try to save for that pet? Um, what are the advantages of, an, of performing orthodontics on a pet? Yeah, we don't really care if they have a perfect smile, but we want them to be comfortable. We don't want them to be in pain when they're closing their mouth or chewing. And then realistically, another aspect of this is really keeping our equipment maintained. How do we sharpen instruments? Um, how do we maintain our dental equipment? All of those things need to be done. I, I hear too many times from technicians and even my own students who are like, well, we don't sharpen anything, we just send it out. Um, thing, you can sharpen those so easily in your practice and to save the practice money by not having to send all the equipment out and actually maintain your equipment and, and have it more user friendly to the veterinarian because it's sharp and ready to go when they need that equipment. And then realistically, even Having the, te the technician students understand exotic animal dentistry, um, all of those little patients, all our little pocket pets and rabbits and things like that have dental issues. How do we treat those? What do we need to do? What is a normal dentition for a you know, hamster? Um, things like that. So they're ready to go with that when they're into practice. And of course, also that includes equine dentistry. So um, they have at least an understanding Maybe they're not gonna work in a large animal practice, I get that, um, but they really need to understand how the equine teeth work um, because again, that is something that's very important to that companion animal. And yes, I consider equines companion animals. My horse is, he's my companion, he's 29 now, um, but um, you know, he's, he's there and he's, he's uh, you know, one of my pets. So basically that's why I feel dentistry is so very, very important. We really need to make sure that our technician students understand that dentistry should be part of every oral or every examination, um, no matter what the pet comes in for. Take a look at those teeth. You can be amazed at what you find um, on those. Maybe we have more emergent things to worry about when that patient first is pre presented to us, but we need to make sure we are offering the best care we can to have our um, patients be as healthy as possible as long as possible. So that's pretty much all I have right now, Jess. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we'll be happy to entertain those at this time. So I don't see any questions yet. Um, we'll give a, you guys a few minutes to type those in if you have any, but there is a comment. Uh -oh. um, no, <laughs> no um, Kat says that she just used your 2017 diagnostic dental radiograph positioning video as oh. the basis for distance learning during um, this time of minimal on-campus lab time with her students. So she says, awesome. thank you. <laughs> and I do have that available. Um, if anybody needs this, this just, there's not only the video, but I also have a little positioning guide booklet that has both pictures and everything in it. So if anybody ever needs that for your students, just let me know. We'll get that shipped out to you. Okay. And I haven't really, I mean, just to let you know, there will be a textbook being released soon too. So in fact, I'm reading through the very final last copy as I'm 
when I'm done here today to have that shipped out to be printed. So that's exciting. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> um, I do have a, a quick question though. Um, sure. While I wait to see if anyone has any, you mentioned, you said that you have a nickname Dental Diva in the beginning, yes. right? How did that come about? Um, actually, it happened at Western Vet Conference. I was speaking and um, my moderator lost my bio. So she just gets up and says, um, I am so-and-so, I'm here to introduce Mary Berg. I have lost her bio, but right, but she's basically the dental diva. And I looked at her and I said, I'm keeping that. And since then it's been kind of an extra persona that I have. And there is a picture somewhere of me dressed up as the, with the sash and the scepter and crown of wearing the, the diva. It was a Halloween costume contest, but it's, um, yeah. <laughs> we all have to have something that we're used to. <laughs> um all right so i don't see any questions coming i must have through. done a really good job or everybody's just afraid to ask i'm not sure which no i mean you probably covered it so well that no one has any questions to ask no they're more than welcome to you know reach out to me um you can reach out to me at my email and if you have any questions or on beyond the crown veterinary education on facebook and i'll be happy to answer any questions that people might have great that's awesome. Thank you so much, Mary, for joining us today and sharing. Thanks, everybody. And let's start teaching dentistry as a full semester course.